Hi, everybody. It's Cindy. I'm Christine at Candles and Supplies. And today we are doing hand dip tapers, which is super fun for the holidays. Well, all year long, but for the holidays, people think it tapers a lot. So right. um, dinner tables and such. Dinner tables, parties, get togethers, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving mm -hmm. this week, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving Eve, actually. Yes. So, um, but yeah, so dinner tables. There's also, um, you know, a Bayberry candle. The old Bayberry candle legend, you know, a Bayberry candle burned down to the socket brings health to your whatever. Pocket. Is yeah. that what it was? Yeah, no. Oh. Health to your life and, and wealth to your pocket wealth. or something. It's something about something being like healthy that. and wealthy, which is all good yeah. stuff, too. All so you can look up the exact legend. I should have memorized that before we came on here. But it's one of my favorites every year. Mm -hmm. So, like, hand dip Bayberry tapers are very popular and everything, too. So... And they're kind of a lot of fun. This is a good project you can do with kids. Um, you can do it by yourself, uh, whatever. We got in these cool new taper racks, which I love. I used to have one of these way, way, way back when I started making candles. Um, and then I kind of thought that nobody was into tapers anymore. So I don't know what happened to mine. It disappeared somehow. But when I saw these available at a machine shop again, he said, oh, I'll make these for you. I was so, so excited. <laughs> I couldn't wait. I, and I brought these in and stuff. But I wanted to be able to like you know, show you guys how to use them and do a video. We did post a, a video on YouTube about how to wick the, yes. the taper, so, um, which is important too. So, but um, these are a lot of fun. So this is gonna make uh, at one time, so you're gonna be, we're gonna be dipping like six different tapers or three sets. So I like to be able to hang tapers. I think they're like super cute when you can hang them and stuff. So I like to be able to hang them. So I usually do them in sets and we wick this up to where you can do them in sets. You can also cut them apart and have single tapers. Um, you can make these as short or as long as you want. So this rack, it's super easy to use. Um, you know, it, it doesn't require anything. It, we come sending them assembled. So they're all assembled for you and everything like that. Um, you always want to leave your bottom adjustment at the bottom because that's going to be the base. When you're dipping, you don't want to have the big tube off the bottom. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get it down far enough. Um, so you always leave this one at the bottom and let me show you that it has little hooks that hold the the wicks on here so you want to make sure these little hooks are always pointing up so this the top one points up and the bottom one points down so what we're going to do is hook the wick on those so if the top one are pointing up and the bottom one are pointing down the wick will slide off so you don't want that so the bottom ones are always down top ones are always up they come pre-assembled so they should be assembled for you and all you need to do is adjust them so one thing that i do do uh, when you get them you want to just get a pair of pliers and make sure these wing nut things are very tight right because when you're dipping you don't want it to like go up and down or become unloose so i find that like i can't i, I mean i'm not that strong but yeah or my hand my fingers aren't that strong but if i just take a pair of pliers and make sure the bottom one's like super tight just crank it on make sure it's super tight this one's a little dirty because i've been making beeswax candles and that's been super fun <laughs> um, make sure it's tight and then you're all ready to go Next thing you want to do before um, starting to dip them and stuff like that, you want to make sure that you have the right height, right? So you can decide like what size tapers you want. You can get, you know, all scientific about it and stuff like that. You want to make sure there's at least a inch of exposed wick to the top that way. I mean, you could theoretically dip it all the way up to the top, but I usually make sure there's a little bit of exposed wick at the top. That way there's room. You could always trim wick off, but you can't add more. So I would rather have a little more wick at the top than less. Um, so what you want to do is measure it with whatever your dipping vat's going to be. Today, we're going to use our plain old melting pots here for dipping vats. You know, these are, you know, it'll make these size tapers. So like a six or seven inch taper um, for you. If you want to do, you know, like taller dinner tapers, 10 inch, you'll need a much deeper vat. So, and that you can, try to find anywhere like metal vats. We sell the ones for carved candles. They're like 110 bucks. I don't know if you want to make that much of a commitment into it or not, uh, but they are available as an option. We're just going to use the melting pot today because it's very simple to make the seven or eight inch tapers and stuff. And these little beeswax tapers are so cute. So somebody's turning, having a birthday and, and turning a big decade number, 20, obviously. But. Yeah. <laughs> 
So I'm thinking about using these little beeswax candles on her cake because that would be amazing. Mm, so, yeah. Uh, anyway, they're really cute. So what you want to do is set the um, set the height. So when we're dipping in this, I'm going to put it right next to here. Hopefully you can see it. I feel like there's a lot of metal going on. But we'll put it right next to here. I have this set at the top. Now, as you dip, you're going to get stalactites hanging off the, the bottom of the rack here. So it's not going to dip you know, too Flush, high or anything yeah. like that. Um, and you'll see, like hand dip papers, whenever you look at them, they're always, you'll see this as we're dipping too. So they're always kind of pointy up at the top here. So they get pointy and then they get thicker as you go down. That's because of the buildup on the taper dipping, like at whatever you're dipping on, it's the buildup on the bottom. You're not going to be able to dip it as high on each repetitive dip. So it's going to make that nice kind of point at the top for you. So I think it looks cool. Um, it's odd we're having a flat taper at the top, but that's not usually possible. Yeah. So, so we're going to set the height. This one happens to be set for this melting pot. If I wanted to make smaller ones, I would just loosen this. With the, <laughs> with the pliers because I made it nice and tight. Remember, I stress tight, so um, you would just loosen this and you can move this up or down. You do like little birthday candles. Right, so you could do birthday candles if you could make it tiny, do birthday candles. You can move it up, do like dinner tapers if you have a deeper dipping vat, um, whatever size you want. So I usually just size it up with my container here. We're happy to be using this pot. I'm going to put it on here and then we want to match up so the arms. This arm on the top wants to coordinate with this arm on the bottom. That way your, your taper candle isn't going to be like crooked, right? You want them to be straight, theoretically, in a straight world. They are warm when you take them off, so there is a bit of adjustment. So, And it likes to turn when you adjust this. So, All right, and we're just going to make this tight again with the pliers. So it's set. Everything's straight. So these match up with the bottom. You can look, we line them up with the camera. See, they this matches up with that. So my tapers are going to be straight. Hopefully that, it always looks crooked when I put it in front of the camera. So I apologize for that. All right. So this is all assembled. It is ready to wick. So wicking it is not tricky. It seems like it should be a little tricky, but it's not actually. I have a rack here. It's good to hang it up. We can probably. Yeah. All right. So this is just this is just one of our rolls of wicking hung up on floral wire here. Not too uh, <laughs> not too high tech. High tech yeah. You don't need it to be high tech, right? You don't need it. This is this is simple stuff. You don't need it to be high tech. So what I'll do is just make a little knot on the bottom of this, just a little loop, so that I can catch one of these um, bottom prongs. prongs the cans. And it's also important to have these two tight um, before you start wicking it. Uh, I made that mistake at first. I didn't tighten them up with pliers. And then what happened, I got it all wicked and it looked great. And this thing sunk down and all my wick kind of went all over the place. So it was a little unexpected, but you know, we recovered. I just re-wicked it, it. It literally takes like three seconds to wick. So it's not hard at all. We'll wick this a couple times. It's always challenging finding scissors without wax on them here. <laughs> wax is not a scissor friend. I'm just going to cut the excess wick off. So I just tied a little knot on here. And it's just, just a knot so that I can hook it around the, the little prong here. Okay, so make a little loop with the knot. All right, so that's just holding that right there. And then what I'm going to do is come up to the top prong, run the wick across. I think we should bring the camera over. Will that be easier to hold it or not? Uh -huh. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see if you can get close. So see the little knot on the bottom? Yeah. So I have just a little knot on the bottom, and then I'm going to run the wick up to the top here to catch the top prong over to the side. Down to the bottom. Across the bottom. Yeah. My invention of hanging this is not as good as having it on the ground. <laughs> Top, bottom. Almost rolled off the counter we had on the ground, though. Bottom, that's true. 
That's true. Would have been catching it. Bottom. Top, top. And then we're down to the bottom again. So we're in the bottom. I want to just cut the wick. And then it flies all over. And we're not going to get upset about that because I wanted to do that so I could show you how to do it again. If you're really prepared, no. I really did want to do that, so I did it on purpose. If you're really prepared, you could cut lengths of wick. Um, I don't really worry about it because it's not too hard. So in the fast mode, when we're not having the, the spool getting all tangled up, we have the loop on the bottom. We go up to the top, across to the next top, down to the bottom, across to the next bottom, up to the top, across to the next top, down to the bottom, across to the next bottom, Switch hands for dexterity. Up to the top, across the top, and then we're back down at the bottom. And then I'll just wrap the wick around a couple times. And then tie my knot so it doesn't get all loose. All right. And it doesn't have to be a super fancy knot again. It's at the bottom of the candle. Not super fancy. But this rack is ready to go. We are all wicked up. All right, for the exciting part. Dun, da, da, da. And I like these racks because I can just hang this. It's before you don't want to really, I mean, I guess you could lay it down and stuff like that, but I find the wick wants to go everywhere on me when I lay it down. So my other tools of choice today, what I have, um, what's going on back here is I'm heating the wax. Ideally, we want the wax to be between 155 and 165 degrees. Why we want it to be so cool is because if you make candles, you know that wax, um, as it cools down, it gets thicker. So we want it to be kind of thicker so that it builds up, right? If the wax is too thin, it's just going to slide right off our wick. We're going to be dipping it like 55 times and then just have a birthday candle. We don't want that. We want the wax to be thicker. So this is a very good instance where I like a candy thermometer because you can just pop it in the melting pot and it'll read the temperature for you. So we are beautiful. We are at 165. Look how good I am at my job. So I can melt wax. On the <laughs> yeah. So we're at 165. This is all ready for, for dipping. Um, when the wax, of course, gets too cool, it gets clumpy, and you get kind of a lumpy taper instead of a smooth taper. So I took this off the heat source. Uh, I am I did double boil this because I didn't want the wax to get too hot. You're welcome to melt the wax in a melter and then put it in the pot. But if you put it on a double boiler, you can really adjust the heat to where you get like a nice even temperature and keep it at the same temperature. If I wasn't trying to do this in front of you guys, um, for show, I would just keep it on there. I would dip right in the pot because I know it's at like the perfect temperature to go. And I wouldn't have to worry about reheating. If I keep this on here, if I talk too long, like I tend to do, if I keep it on the table or whatever, this wax is going to get cooler. It's going to need to be heated up. But for now, it can just hang out there and be all ready for us. So, And then in between dips, so we do this like our carved candles. This is just another melting pot, um, and it's just plain tap water. So what the tap water does, is going to cool off the taper candles in between dips, right? So we're going to dip in the wax and then in the water and then in the wax and then in the water. So we get buildup on here. Um, that's the goal anyway. That's what we're trying to accomplish. The wick that I'm using, I forgot to explain that. So, so since we're making a taper candle and it's a very skinny candle, we want a small wick in there, right? We don't want like this big torching flame that's throwing wax all over the place and going all over your kitchen or wherever you're burning the taper. Um, you know, if you give them away or sell them away or whatever, they're not going to be happy if wax is going all over. There is a thing, though, where you would put the, the taper candle into a bottle and you do different colors. So you light it up. You do want the wax to drip down. It drips down the bottle and you do different colors. So you keep replacing the taper candle in the bottle with a different color taper. And as you burn it, the wax goes on the bottle. So the bottle ends up with all these random drips of different colors, which looks really cool. It was super popular like yeah, 15 years that. ago. Yeah. yeah, you were a very small child when that was popular. But Not 15 years it's ago. It's still fun. It's not even more 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah, small child. maybe 20 years ago. So, but you can do that too with the, the dip tapers. So, um, can I dip? That's fun. <gasps> yeah, you should dip. So she know. hasn't dipped yet. yet. Yeah, she hasn't dipped yet. Um, but the 12, we use 12 ply flat grade cotton wicking. Um, I'm using beeswax today because I love beeswax and I want beeswax tapers in my life. And 
Yeah. She was melting the wax the entire like half of the showroom that's like all the way down smelled like beeswax. Yes, beeswax <laughs> is wonderful. So, and beeswax tapers go for a lot of money. If you haven't priced beeswax tapers lately, go do that. You'll see how fast this is. Like we're going to carve and, and do this and not carve, carve. but dip. <laughs> we're going to dip this and get these done like all within a half hour and they're going to be ready to go. So anyway, so I have just yep. a pot of plain tap water and I make it like maybe a little bit warmer than room temperature. You don't want it to be too cool because you don't want to go from the hot wax into very cool water or you, you stand a chance of the candle cracking. Um, so we don't want to do that. We just want it to cool down enough to where it accepts the next layer of wax. So we're like going to dip and build up the layers as we go on. So, um, and Christine, it's going to demonstrate so this for us. Let me give the wax a little stir. It's already cooling down. See, builds yep. up nice. So you can test that too. If you have a cold thermometer, you can test the buildup. So the fact that it's sticking to my thermometer like this, it's going to do wonderful things on this uh, rack here. Okay. So first thing you do, you just dip that all the way down, push it right down to the bottom. That's it. Bring it back out. And that's your first layer. And then dip it into the water. You only want to go up to where the wax was. That's fine. And then back into the wax. So it's just repetitive. You're going to, it seems the first, it seems like the first seven or eight dips, you're not getting anywhere. You're just coating your wick and you're like, this, this is kind of horrible. I'm wasting my life dipping. Mm -hmm. But then, then after that, it starts to build up and look like a candle. Then the fun begins. So, yeah. So she's just going in between the wax and the water real easy. And it's starting to build up now. The key is your wax temperature. Remember 155 to 165. That is absolutely key. If the wax is too cool, it builds up clumpy. If and breaks apart if the wax is too hot it doesn't build up like this so you see i don't know how many dips she has but i'm guessing like Probably seven or seven, eight yeah. yeah and it's already starting to build up into a little candle here that's a perfect so, size, so. Okay. you don't have to worry about the water getting into these wax at all when you're going back and forth so you i mean there will be maybe a little bit of water getting into the beeswax um it's not going to get into the beeswax in the candle but what happens when water gets into wax is it sinks to the bottom so it's not going to actually build up on the candle or anything like that, but it, you may get a little bit, a few drops of water in there. It's no big deal. We're not going to, that's the least of our problems. So we're not going to worry about that. And then if you let the, the wax cool, the water obviously will go right out of it. So look how cool they're getting. So looking like real candles now. And these are just our, Regular three to four pound melting pots. No. It's my tire after a while. Yeah. Though. It is a good arm workout. Yeah. <laughs> it's very about time you need to keep it in the wax. I mean. No, that's a good question. So when you're dipping it in the wax, it's better if you just dip it in and pull it out. If you leave it in the wax, what happens? It's gonna to get too hot and then your wax is gonna go off right? If you just dip it in and do it like you're doing perfect, just in and out. That's absolutely perfect. Because if you leave it in there, then the wax melts off and goes, goes elsewhere. So you can see on the bottom her, that's where the stalactites are. So she's getting a nice point on the top just because she can't keep dipping it in. So it's like you're, you're almost done. So you basically, you just keep dipping it until you get the size taper that you want. So the thickness that you want, we keep that we can make these super fat and chunky like like these uh, teal chubby ones over there um, or we can make it thinner like birthday candles we're past that point so it's not a birthday candle anymore mm -hmm. uh, but just keep dipping it till you get the thickness that you want and they keep building up this is fun now all the wax is sticking to the rack too so you'll see there's you know the wax sticking to the candle but the wax is also sticking to the rack that's very easy the wax is going to be warm i'll show you how to clean that off and that just gets thrown right back into the pot so you can make more candles from it so nothing's really wasted at all which is awesome all right looks it's like you're heavy. just about i know yeah all right it's my last come one. on here how much are you doing now this is looking pretty good so this is going to be our last one i'm going to bring this rack over because i think it's a little easier for everyone to see and you can use whatever system you want i like hanging the rack the, the candles up all right, because it makes it uh, makes it a lot easier to work with. 
Now these candles are hot, so they're very soft at this point. So if you would lay it down and try to do all this stuff with it laying down, you're gonna get dents and damages and stuff like that. So remember when we strung the wick that you know we had some going across the bottom? So you can see it on the bottom now. That's what I'm gonna cut first because that's gonna actually release. So there should be two parts on the bottom where the wick strings over. So I'm just gonna cut those first right through the wicking in here for a close-up so then we're going to do this one so now i know since that's cut through i know that all these are going to release just fine so see how the wax is very um, soft at this point you can just pull it off so what i'll do next is just kind of break the wax pull it off the rack so the candle just pulls right off the next one fall off all by itself. Now the ones where you actually tied the wick on, those are going to be a little bit trickier. I'll hang these over here. And just pull this off. You can also take the scissors if you want to and just snip the bottom of the candle. I find that I get a longer candle if I don't do that. So. other set so then this was the one that I probably tied on these are the most difficult to remove because remember we tied the wick on here maybe not it's being easy with me you know sometimes things just flow and go your way and then sometimes they do not ah so there here's what I'm talking yeah. about so so when the wick is tied on there, it just wants to not release for you. But here's the cool thing. Beeswax is very soft and supple. So you can just push that wick into the inside. And then it's like Play-Doh at this point. So you can just put it back together. And then nothing ever happened there. <laughs> okay. So now we have this big, it kind of looks like a tooth on the bottom. We want to make these not look like a tooth on the bottom. So I just take plain scissors. And I cut through and it's okay if your scissors because sometimes it doesn't want to cut through the wick it's okay to just leave the wick on the bottom and you can kind of shape the bottom to make it look a little more nicer nicer and then I'll cut the bottom of this one too and always cut the wick off later that's what I figure we cut these just round the bottom and then I can just press them on the table to make them flat this was the one that was hanging on so make sure your wicks are centered in the bottom and there's one little set we'll cut the extra wick off the bottom later and it's important to kind of work with this while the wax is still warm because that way it's very friendly with you and they always want there's two others you can always if if you wait till the wax is harder it's harder to cut these bottoms off but you could always do that and if you forget to make the bottoms perfect and shape them or whatever you can always just cut them off later with a knife or a pair of scissors whatever trims them up cut this one off here we have all of our little tapers and I'm just going to let them hang out while that's happening here's all the leftover wax that we're not going to use so I just take a plain paring knife this we use these for cutting this is one of my carving knives and I'm just going to cut the wax off of the rack here if you don't want to left them theoretically you could probably wick the rack again and keep going but then the wax on the inside of the rack is going to be so thick that you're probably not going to be able to um, get the tapers very thick if your wax on the inside keeps getting thicker. I just cut it off. It's thick and pliable. It's like, oh, it's fun to play with right now. Yeah, well, you should be cutting this off. I mean, you're, you're, are you pretty much only done cutting that? Yeah, no, almost. I just cut as much as I can off, and then you just take it near a heat gun and heat gun it right over top of the melting pot. Cut them off. 
kind of fun to play with. Not going to lie. I am one of those people that likes to play with wax, though. Yeah. It's been my medium for years. Love it. Wax is fun. Yeah, I think I stick this back in my pot. Yeah. Time. And then, yeah, show them, like, uh, or excess wax. You just pop it back in the melting pot. Make more tapers. If anybody has beehives or whatever, this is a great way to use up your wax, too. Make some beautiful tapers out of it. All right. So that's pretty clean. If I was just doing beeswax candles again, I would just, I would leave it like that. If I'm going to another wax, if I want to do, you know, a colored wax or a different beeswax, different scent, whatever, I would just take this, take a heat gun right to this metal here. It'll the metal heat up. The wax will, like, drip off of it. And you can just wipe it clean with a paper towel. So that's how easy it cleans up. And then these are also fun too. So this is warm at this point. There's all kinds of paper projects that you can do. Like theoretically, we could take, you know, a rolling pin, roll these flat and twist them for like a twisty type candles. Like I don't have a rolling pin here. I was trying to find one. Um, you know, if you wanted to spiral it around something, you can make spiral beeswax tapers and stuff. But it's best to do that when, when they're nice and warm. You can kind of see the color too. So these were dipped a little earlier today. So you see the warm beeswax is a little, bring the front. The warm beeswax is a little lighter in color. That's how you can tell it's still warm. And this one's the darker one. So that one's a little darker, but aren't they pretty? They're so beautiful. So we made six tapers in like, well, minutes. yeah, about 20 ish minutes. So. You know, once you get good at it and you can just like we could just wick up this malt, this, you know, rack here real quick again and start dipping them. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty fast and easy to use and stuff like that. So um, to finish the bottom. So if you if you don't want the hand dip tapered look, if you want more of like a finished look on the bottoms, um, I have a magic trick here. I got it nice and hot <laughs> so I can't touch it. So. What you want to do is just a regular. Ah. This is a 10 point socket from a socket set. So, but look at the nice edge on the inside there and they come in all different sizes. This happens to be a 19 millimeter, but depending on the candle that you do um, will depend on like what size you need. So if I wanted to finish the bottom on these, this is too big. It's not going to like, it doesn't, it doesn't go in. So, but I have a white candle over here. And this candle is absolutely perfect for in here. So I can put that in. So I had this on a hot plate before it went in here. And what this does, you stick it in and just make sure it's straight. Ooh, that's hot. See how it finishes the bottom? So it gives it little ridges. It takes on the ridges of the socket, kind of finishes the bottom and gets it ready for the uh, candle holder that it's going to go into. It's really hot. So you want to leave that. When you're working with that, you don't want to hold it as I did. You want to keep it on your heat source. So usually what I do is make like a little, uh, get like a little tinfoil pie plate or something. Ooh, that's really hot. Get a little tinfoil pie plate, put the socket in the pie plate. That way as the wax runs out the bottom, it just goes in the pie plate and not all over, you know, your um, griddle, or, griddle or, or I yeah. use the griddle, but you can use a hot plate or anything, whatever kind of heat source that you want to. You just need that socket to get hot so that it melts the bottom of the candle and gets it ready for a candle holder. So, uh, yeah, and that's it for making yeah. tapers. So that's fun, right? It is fun. Now, I'm gonna make a few more for the holiday season. I think I'm gonna uh, fire up my big carving yeah, system though make and make ones. some, yeah, yeah, make some make some bigger ones and stuff. So, but they're fun. And you can do this, like you can scent the wax too. You can do scented wax. Um, I still recommend if you're gonna burn these, use candle dyes for the color and not pigments. Pigments actually impair the burn. We use them on our carved candles because we don't want the, the carved part to burn. Um, but use candle dyes to dye them. Um, use a high melt point wax too. Like higher melt point waxes tend to work better. Beeswax theoretically is not a high melt point wax. I wouldn't consider that a hell but it is a very, very slow burning wax. 
So what you want is slow burning and a higher melt point will give you a slower burn. You can also put additives in your wax like Vibar and Steric to get it to burn a little slower. Um, but I would use, you know, like a 156 melt point or higher, 160 melt point, whatever you can. Um, I wanted to try palm wax, like the feather palm wax. That makes a beautiful taper too. Uh, but I forgot to put that in a pot. So so we won't do that today. We'll do that on another day. Maybe for Valentine's Day, we'll do Valentine mm -hmm. tapers. That would be kind of cool. Tapers of love. So <laughs> but anyway, but that's how easy it is to make tapers. These are really fun. This would be a good, you know, present for any kind of candle making friend too. I bet they do not have a taper dipping rack. So great holiday gift, great birthday gift. Um, yeah, just And super fun to make. Not a, not a big commitment in time or anything like that. So, but you can keep going. So if you have a couple racks that would be, then while one's drying, you can do another one or, you know. Invite like your friends over to do it. See so. if you have any questions. Yeah. Christine's going to check out the questions. I can't see them from here. Mm, I think Trisha. I, see Nick, you there. Easy. I know. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, everybody. Uh, just thank you. No questions. Yes. All right. Yeah, if you have any questions, post them in the comments and everything. So, let us know. And let us know. What are we doing next week on our live stream? Um, well, that's really up to you. Um, so oh. we, Somebody won't be here, so I'm going solo. I will not be here, <laughs> but... Um, so we had mentioned oh. Amber. Amber's. Um, Amber's we mentioned doing the, the oh. behind oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So next week is like our busiest week of the year. So I believe our live stream, we're going to kind of do a behind the scenes here at Candlestick oh. Supplies. Take you for a little tour of our showroom and we'll go out and harass some people out there and see what they're up to, what they're making and holiday gifts or whatever. So it's going to be fun. So come join us next week. for live on the scenes at Candles and Supplies. So. Thanks, everybody. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Be Bye. safe.